This is a uh, 7-11 problem. Um, here you have a uniform loading of 50 kilonewtons per meter. Um, first thing to do is draw yourself a free by diagram of this. So I'll come in here real quickly. Just draw my beam like this. Um, I have a distributed load. And so I'll go ahead and draw the forces here. You have a force coming up here at A supposedly. You have a force coming down here at B right here. So this is a force at A Y. This is the force at B Y. Okay, you get a distributed load. So if we take fifty kilonewtons per meter. We'll multiply that times the length, which is six meters. Obviously meters are going to cancel out here and here. That's going to leave you uh, 300 kilonewtons. That's happening right in the middle. Like this. There's two things you can do. You know right now FBY is 300 and this has to be zero, but if you don't know that, all you have to do is take a moment around A. So if I take a moment around A and set that equal to zero, then I would have 300. I'll make that negative because it's going this way here. Times the distance, which is three. plus FBY times the distance is three. Set that equal to zero and you'll get very quickly FBY is equal to 300 kilonewtons and that's going up and if you sum the forces in the Y direction um, you can find very quickly that FAY is zero. Okay, at this you're ready to draw your shear diagram our shear diagram, we will come over here, we'll just draw, oops, let's draw a straight line here quickly. Move this down slightly here. Okay, remember too, if it's bending like, go back to the picture here, if this is making it bend like this here, that's going to be negative. That's why we're going to start down here. We will go like this all the way to the middle. Now if you figure out what that load is, wouldn't that be 50 kilonewtons times 3 or 150 when you reach B? So I'll label this as minus 150. At this point we're going to go back up, which we said was 300 here. So this would go straight back up like this. And this angles back down to here. Again, this value would be here, would be 150 here. And that's your shear diagram. So if you look here, your maximum shear is going to occur here, along right at this point here, which is right in the middle, which is what you su would suspect. So maximum shear will occur right here. All right, so we go back, scroll down here, and we'll go back to the equation that maximum shear is equal to V Q over I times T. We'll go ahead and start filling things out. We know this will be maximum shear was going to be three, oops, 150, sorry. Hundred and fifty kilonewtons times ten to the third. Alright, we'll figure our Q values here. We look at this cross section in the Q. Again, what you do is you define this. You just split this down the middle. This would be the Q value right here, upper one, which would be point, you find the area, point 0.05 times the thickness here, which in this case would be point 0.05 also, times the distance from here up to the center, which is right there, which would be 0.025. That's your Q value. If you run that value, you'll find out it's going to give you 6.25 times 10 to the minus 5. 
that's your Q. All you gotta do is slide that back into here. Okay, now find our moment inertia. Go back to this, I'm gonna erase some of this, give myself a little bit of space. I'll go ahead and get rid of this line here. So if I was finding my moment inertia of this cross section, it would equal to one twelfth times my base, which is 0 0.050 times my height which is 0 0.100 we take that to the third power and we do that we'll get 4.167 times 10 to the minus 6 put that into the equation now all we have to do is multiply it by the thickness of the part Thickness of the part across where right here across the middle, where maximum shear is 0 0.05. All we have to do is run that number and we'll get 44.996 times 10 to the minus 6. Or you could say, oh, not, not mega 6, I'm sorry, positive 6. which is equivalent to 45 mega pascals. And that's it. Problem is really, this is a really simple problem. Maybe the hardest part is going back and remembering how to do your shear diagram, but that's it. All right.